Hello channel friends, this is WCopen38 and on today's show as you can tell I'm doing something completely different. Now I have another hobby that I uh, do and it's actually a business too. I repair computers. So what I want to go over with you today is something really basic and I get a lot of questions about it here at home is how do you buy a new computer? And what I mean is, how do I select a computer to replace an old one or some people that have never even had a computer before or how to upgrade or how to pick up a computer for a grandchild or a son or a daughter. Now normally the first thing I ask them is what kind of computer do you have now? Now depending on their circumstances they might have a very old computer they might have a fairly modern computer they might have a computer that that's gone out the motherboard or some part inside that's too expensive to replace is quit so they're gonna have to replace the computer itself so when you're deciding what kind of computer they do they have now that means are they using a very old Dell or a very old IBM or a very old HP and what that involves is how old is a the operating system how what type of CPU that's this are they using how much hard drive space do they have things like that once you do, once you decide that, you have to decide what are they going to use it for now? Or is it just for one of their kids to go to school? Is it for just doing homework? Is it for gaming? And if you're a gamer, you're probably not watching my video because you guys are pretty advanced and uh, you'll probably wind up shut this off. But th this video is primarily to help people become familiar with what they're buying when they're looking at a computer. Because let's face it, when the average person goes and they see a computer case on the shelf, they have little or no idea of exactly what they're buying. So I'm going to try to fix that a little bit. Now, if they're working with a very old computer, it's probably going to have what's called a single core processor and what that is a single core processor essentially runs one piece of software at a time when the computer is working in other words it can start up and it can run the operating system depending on what brand you have whether it's a Mac or a PC and that's it and then you open some software and it puts the CPU to work. Now this, this is what a CPU actually works uh, looks like. Okay, I don't have, I didn't have one laying around, so I couldn't uh, pull one out of a box and show it to you. This is what actually does the computing in your computer. Not very fancy, but it's very very high tech. It has pins on the other side. And it sits into a part on the computer called a motherboard. Now that that's going to be more technical than the average person is uh, familiar with, and I'm not going to go into that. That that was a that's a tech type of thing. Now, fastened to the CPU is this. Now, depending on whether you have uh, what processor you're using, this is called a heat sink, this, or another, other people would call it a CPU cooler. This sits on top of this, and there's a fan right here. The fan turns and draws heat from here because this has picked up heat from the CPU. That's kind of really abbreviated, but that's pretty much how they work. The fan spins when the computer comes on. This plugs into the motherboard and causes the fan to engage when you power up your computer. That's the humming that you hear when you power up your computer. That's a little explanation of those parts. 
Now, another part that's going to be involved in what we're talking about is this. I have one of these laying around. This is a, a stick of memory. Now they come in various sizes because the, you have what's called notebook memory and you have desktop memory. I don't have any notebook memory but they're about this big and they'll have a little uh, indent in them so that they are lined up properly when you install them. This memory is for a fairly new machine and they have really old memory out laying around for some of the really old equipment. Now memory memory is one, one of the part of the heart and soul of a computer and I'll explain it to you in a minute. Now when you're working with an old, old, old computer you have to ask the qu customer the question what kind of software are they running and what do they want to upgrade to? Well the newest operating system that's out right now is Windows 7. Now Windows 7 is pretty advanced and it's a as far as I'm concerned it's one of the most reliable operating systems that Microsoft has come out with. Windows 8's on the way and I've seen some previews of it but since I haven't worked with it I can't really give you an informed opinion on it. Now when you're working with the CPU part let's go over a few things on that. The different CPUs that are available now are you have Celeron CPUs they're from Intel you have an AMD CPU that the single core AMDs that are out you have dual core CPUs from AMD you have dual cores from Intel okay I know I know this is technical and it's kind of a lot to take in but here's what I'm getting at there's a lot of choices when you go to choose a computer and it's best to be at least a little bit informed now if you're get, I'll give you an example. If you're getting a computer for a student, it, depending on how old they are and how long they plan on hanging on to it, decides uh, what type of CPU you're going to put into it. Now the budget CPUs are the Celerons. Now the Celerons are essentially a tuned down CPU. They don't have a lot of the uh, things that make a CPU go really fast. They only have a, about half of a single core. They're not especially efficient and they're pretty much for a student that's just doing homework. They're really they'll do okay on the internet but they're not very fast and they're like I said they're not very efficient. A Celeron is like if you're on a really tight budget and I mean really really tight because the difference in cost between the cheapest uh, processor which is the Celeron and a, a decent single core is only a few bucks. It's I don't I they, they're out there and I, just, I only recommend them if you're just doing basic uh, word processing in other words you have to type up a school paper and that's about it. You don't surf the internet a lot or do photo editing or anything like that. Now the next CPU that's out is going to be a machine that would have a dual core in it. So what that is, you ha it has two cores in the CPU to help it work. What that boils down to is it allows the computer to really basically work a lot faster. That's kind of uh, the easiest way to explain it for a layman. It, it increases the computing speed and it allows it to do more than one process at a time efficiently. Now you can, I'm not going to get into the different grades of dual cores or anything like that because that, that's a whole subject in itself. For the layperson replacing a computer you're going to need to what I recommend would be a good dual core processor and a computer that's got a decent sized hard drive. Now when you're thinking about the CPU 
and a hard drive. A lot of people get a, these things confused because they think that memory is the mo most important part because it's for storage. Well, memory is not for storage, and people get that confused. The hard drive, and I, I unfortunately I don't have a picture of one out here, is what's called permanent storage. It's where you, your files and your pictures and documents and your operating system go to make the computer run. Memory is temporary storage. And by temporary, what it does when the system starts up, it loads the operating system and everything that it takes to run the computer on a memory module. And memory modules come in different capacities. And by capacity, I mean like 1 gigabyte of memory or 512 megabytes of memory or 2 gigabytes on, on up to 4 gigabytes. The amount of memory that it has decides how many programs it can store in a temporary holding area until you actually use it. And what that, that involves is when you open up any kind of program, whether it's a word processor or you go open up the internet or you open up a document or photo editing or anything like that, it loads a portion of the operating system and the software actually gets loaded into here, into the memory module. And it stores it and it keeps it stored even though you shut the program off. So even though you shut a program down, part of it's stored in here. Now a certain amount goes back to the hard drive and it, and it unloads it's called unloaded out of the memory but it's still there temporarily and so the more memory what this involves in the, essentially is the more memory that you have the faster the computer will run because the memory as it stores more and more programming it, it's a, it fills up and when the memory is full that's where you wind up with the older machines of getting a, a notice on your monitor that says you're you're out of memory. In other words, the, whatever memory is plugged into the motherboard is full. It doesn't have the capacity to hold anymore and you have to start shutting off different programs or depending on the machine, whoops, you have to turn the machine off and restart it, which is a pain in the neck. Now, to pay, depending on the amount of memory the average machine now comes out with at least one gig of memory to run Windows 7 on a, all the way on up to I saw one the other day that was a, a heavier duty unit or more efficient it had eight gigs of memory so the more memory you have the more you have available to run the computer efficiently now it, the speed isn't really determined by the memory in the way that you would think. The speed is determined by the CPU. It's what decides how fast the computer is capable of going and the, the memory holds all the information. So if you have a dual core CPU and a plenty of memory, the computer is going to run very, very well. Now also in CPUs they have what are called quad cores. A quad core CPU has four separate processors in it that handle all your computing. And if you're on the internet a lot, I highly recommend using a quad core because what that does is while one core is working on the internet, you can pause the internet, you can minimize it, put it down on the bottom of the desktop and go start doing something else or you can grab a picture off the internet and post it and edit it without the computer necessarily slowing down a lot. It's going to slow down a little bit but it won't slow down a lot. Now how do these all tie in together? This ties in together 
because when you're choosing your computer they come in different price ranges and as the price goes up what you'll wind up with is more memory a faster processor and more hard drive storage Now, hard drives on the average now come with pretty much uh, either 650 gigabytes or one what they call terabyte that a terabyte is a th roughly about a thousand gigabytes and the, they'll have a more efficient heatsink that strictly depends on the type of computer you're working with now when you talk about hard drives and like I said I don't have one out here the hard drive as far as permanent storage decides how much how many pictures how many documents things like that you have now you also have different grades of hard drives because they the hard drives except for a solid state which is a, a whole new uh, category run on a turntable and if you've ever heard a hard drive go out you'll know, you would know what I'm talking about they, it's on a platter that spins and it stores your information there now while it's stored it's not going anywhere the hard drive is just holding the information until you actually need it and that's where when you point and click on the desktop then it goes and it accesses the information that you have stored and then when you open that up that's where the CPU comes in and the memory comes in Okay, that's kind of a basic on how these parts work together. Now, next question other than what are you going to use it for? If, if you're only doing schoolwork, as I said, you really need a, just a, a real basic, basic computer. It, a dual core processor is what I recommend just because even though I've heard uh, how many people say, well, I, all I use it for is the internet, or all I do is play solitaire, or things like that. Well, eventually that gets old. And then you think, well, I think I'll go on the internet because I'm going to look for a part for my car, or a recipe, or I'm going to use Facebook, or going to buy something on eBay, or Amazon, things like that. So you wind up getting on the internet. Well the internet is the most challenging part of the computer or software I should say for the computer to actually run because if compared to when the internet first came out the internet at that time all you were lucky if you had a gray background one photo and some text that was it now Nowadays, the internet has streaming video. The websites are at least two megabytes, if not more. There's uh, animated, uh, what they call GIFs. Those are the little pop-ups that come up and say, look at me, look at me, look at me. And all of that takes this. Takes CPU power, memory storage to run those. So if you're going to be using the internet uh, even a little bit, that's where I recommend getting a computer that's a, a lot more efficient and can run the internet pretty well without bogging down the machine. If you're gaming, you, you already know that you need a good quad core of this and as much memory as you can afford. Now, next thing that you have to think about when you're buying a new computer if you have one that say it was running the operating system called Windows XP a lot of the XP software will not work on the new version of Windows 7 because it was written for what's called 32-bit now I can't really break down 32-bit for you because you'd get lost but Windows 7 runs in what's called 64-bit. It's more advanced. The software on a lot of 32-bit programming will not work 
with Windows 7 and 64-bit. There's ways of making it work, but that would be a different video. I'm not going to go over that much for you. Right now I'm just trying to show you how to pick out a new computer. So when you're looking at a new computer and you're, these are the parts that go into it, you're going to have to think about your computer needs. What, what are you actually using it for? Another thing you have to think about when you're buying a computer is what kind of case is it coming in. And by that, a lot of the new cases come with slots in them. They're about, oh, about this big. And they're little slots for the memory card that goes in a digital camera. Now, if you've ever seen what's called a SD card, they're real small and they fit in a slot in the computer. Now, that's an advantage because then you don't have to necessarily plug the entire camera up to your computer to download the images that are on your SD card. So that's a plus. You also have to know how many USB slots there are on the case. Now USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. And a USB and the cord are like if you have an iPhone or a camera or a smartphone, any kind of smartphone, a majority of them tether or attach to the computer through a USB cable. USB cable is about this big, real, real tiny, it's got a real fine cord on it and it attaches to the computer and that's where you transfer information from point A to point B. Now the really old cases, if they had a USB at all, it was on the back side of the case. Well, the, a lot of the newer cases, the USB is in front somewhere. And a lot of the better grade cases, not only going to have a USB slot, usually it's two of them, it's also going to have slots for the SD card or appropriate card for whatever type of camera you have. So that's an advantage. That's something to look at also. you want if, if you can't see them, ask the salesman if there are memory called memory card slots in the front of the computer for your camera. Okay? That's, now we've covered that part. Now when you're buying a computer, another thing to think about, frankly, is your budget. How much can you afford to spend? Well, on average, not fixed, on the average you can get a pretty good computer, just the case with the CPU and the memory and the hard drive, for about $450 not with a monitor. Sometimes you might catch them on sale and they th and essentially they give you the monitor for free and if they don't then you'll have to replace the monitor. I'm going to show you some pictures of those. Now $450 is going to get you a very good dual core or a lower end quad core if they're on sale. Which it, I, re I would recommend going with a quad core if you if you're in that price range. When you get down to like you see the computers on sale for two hundred and fifty or three hundred dollars, you're getting a single core computer that's going to have limited workability, as I would put it, to getting to being able to get the job done that you want to get done. Okay, that's kind of that part of it in a nutshell. That's how you would pick out what type of computer that you're going to uh, purchase. Also to think about how long do you want it to last. And that's kind of important to people because maybe you're just uh, buying one and you've never had an efficient computer before or you haven't had anything or the last computer like one, one customer I had they're running Windows 95. Well they, the, eventually they quit playing uh, solitaire with it and they wanted to get on the internet and they found out they couldn't get on the internet because the computer would barely run. And that, that was kind of humorous to see. I hadn't seen a computer using 
that operating system in a very long time. So it was kind of fun to take them down to the store and let them pick out something and find out that computers can actually work really, really quick. Now, the, the last part that I want to go over with you, when you're choosing a computer, if you haven't already upgraded your monitor, you're going to have to decide on that. Now, this is a picture, and I'm sure we've seen these in some offices and uh, government buildings, actually. The government still uses these, if you can imagine that. This is called a CRT, cathode ray tube monitor. There's a very old... There may, when they talk about size of the monitors, it's not a cross, it's measured diagonally. Now, the first monitor that I ever used was 14 inches diagonally, and it was what was available. That, that was it, and I thought that was top of the line. Well, these are, are dead in water now. They, a lot of them won't even work with a new computer because what's called the screen resolution won't adapt to a new monitor, to a new computer. The video cards and the video output isn't compatible with these. But that, I just thought I'd show you a picture of that just for an example. What's used now are flat panel LCDs or LED monitors. Now this is an example of one. This one happens to be a Dell. And I don't have any real preference as far as monitors, but what I would tell you is I have a preference over the type of screen that they have. Now the screens can either be LCD liquid crystal display or LED and that's an electron display. The LEDs are much easier on your eyes. They're a little bit brighter, they have better contrast and they have a much better black-white crispness as far as actual viewing and if you plan on using the computer for any amount of time at all I highly recommend going the extra expense and getting an LED monitor instead of the LCD. They generally run probably about fifty dollars more than the LCD, the liquid crystal display. But if you actually take a look at one in a store and compare them, the LED is much crisper, it's much brighter, and it's easier on your eyes over a period of time. Now, in the measuring for diagonal, they come all the way from 19 inch diagonally all the way up to practically the size of a television. I have one, the one I work with right now is a 23 inch, and that's quite large. The, depending on your budget, I recommend either 20 or 21 inch monitor for you. Uh, it, you but what you're going to have to do is you actually got to go to the store and take a look at them and see what you think. The next thing to go over on buying a computer other than your budget and how long you want it to last is who's using it. If you're the one using it, I recommend getting as much computer as you can afford to buy and then go probably about $50 more because Let's face it, computers, just like everything else nowadays, have planned obsolescence built into them. In other words, the moment you buy it, it's going to be outdated within a year or two. So if you go just a little bit extra, yeah, it can be outdated, but it's going to be able to last longer than one if you get like the bottom end and like you're your computing needs grow and let's face it at all they all grow I haven't seen anybody yet that had a computer and said you know I wish it would do this a little bit more efficiently and that's what it boils down to the computer itself doesn't have to be bad but you wind up getting software and you get other programs that are a little bit more demanding and the next thing you know the CPU uh, slows down or it runs short of memory and then your computer becomes not something that you're going to enjoy, more or less. So that's something to think about when you're buying it, is how long do I want it to last? How, how much demand am I going to put on the processing? And what kind of programs am I going to run on it? 
Well, that's it for this part. This, this has gone a little bit long, but I just wanted to give, give you some ideas of how to actually go through and purchase a new computer. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot of things to go over. Go over it with your salesman when you talk to them. Be informed. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And a lot of them are uh, glad to help you. Now, if you have any questions for me, you can email me at wcopeland38 at comcast.net or leave me a note on, uh, on this video and I'd be glad to email you or give you some advice on any kind of computer that you might be looking for. It's a, it's a lot of fun for me. I really enjoy uh, doing computing. It's a good challenge. Well, this is Dopey Copen 38 saying I'll be back with more for you.